What's up, sons? It's Blind Run, and I spent a whole bunch of time today testing out six different graphics cards in Deus Ex Mankind Divided. All the benchmarks are in 1080p at ultra settings, and some of these results are probably going to surprise you, so stick around. Alright, so I'm going to kind of go over and show you guys what settings we have. Like I said, everything's ultra. Basically, we left everything at the standard ultra settings. We didn't change anything or add additional settings. And the reason for that is I initially did the test on the Titan X. And when I did the test, I went ahead and started out with turning up MSAA all the way up and turning AA all the way up or AF all the way up. And I ran the benchmark and I was was getting less than 60 frames per second on the brand new Titan X that I have overclocked and have tested and you guys can check out the video um, I'll link it in the description below and I was like well that's not gonna work so let's bump everything down to ultra that way we at least have a baseline setting on basically the best graphics card out and we can compare everything else to that and hopefully be able to boot everything or all these cards in that Another thing is that DirectX 12 isn't yet supported. It's apparently not going to be supported until a couple weeks out. So we will come back and retest when DirectX 12 is out and we'll test all these same cards again. And I will then go ahead and link that in the description as well. And we'll do a compare and contrast between the different APIs. So let's get into the benchmarks. So like I said, we booted up and started the game first benchmarking with the NVIDIA Titan X Pascal. And on the Titan X Pascal, we got a, an average of 91.2, a min of 72.2, and a max of 117.1. Not too shabby unless you consider the huge frame differential between 117 frames per second and 72.2 frames per second, especially when this is a canned benchmark, meaning that the real world gaming settings have a huge frame variance and things like G-Sync and FreeSync are going to make a huge difference with that. And I don't know if V-Sync itself is enough to compensate. The trend even continues with the crazy frame rate variance with the EVGA GTX 1070 for the win, where the average was 53.5 frames per second, the min was 42.7 frames per second, and the max was 67.6 frames per second. At least here, I'm going to also say that we finally were not able to stay above 60 FPS and this is on the For the Win Edition GTX 1070. I mean, fuck, that's a $450 card, that's all I gotta say. We're able to still stay above 30 FPS, dropping down to the Zotac GTX 1060 Mini. This is the 6 gigabyte version, and the average is 37 frames per second. The min is 29.7 frames per second, so that's close enough to 30 that you should be okay. And the max is 46.3 frames per second. So this should be indistinguishable enough that you could push on the 1060 6 gigabyte models all the ultra settings and still be able to you know play or be playable however it gets worse um, once we get to the EVGA GTX 1063 gigabyte which I'm in the middle of doing my review on and we're gonna get those out and we're also gonna compare that to the 6 gigabyte version but this is where it starts dropping below 30 frames per second which really sucks and so our average is 34.3 frames per second our min is 24 Four frames per second and our max is 43.3 frames per second. Here is where that line is going to be drawn where you're just not going to be able to run ultra settings at all. No questions asked. You're done. You're not going to be able to do it. I'm sorry. And that really sucks because the GTX 1060 performance is not bad. Um, yeah. And this is an AMD optimized game and a card that I really enjoy. Um, the Sapphire RX 470 had some crazy bad mins. 
Um, while the average was 37.3, beating out the GTX 1060 and both the 3 gig and the 6 gig model, it had a min of 16.3 frames per second. And I reran this one a couple times because I really liked this card and it really didn't make much sense, especially since the max was 52.1 frames per second. I don't know if this is AMD trying to sell FreeSync monitors. Uh, I'm just taking a shot. I was kind of disappointed. And if you're going to be picking up an RX 460, you're definitely going to have to turn settings way, way down. As on Ultra, the Asus Strix RX 460, which is kind of like the best RX 460 out right now. The average is 20 frames per second. The min is 11.7 frames per second. And max is 28.3, which means we're not even getting to 30 frames per second on our max frame rates in Ultra on the Strix RX 460. Now we could chalk this up to games getting better and being more demanding and having more features. I don't know if that's really true. I think that it's definitely playable and it's more playable on very high and lower if you are okay with that. It's a little disappointing and I don't know if they need to work on optimization. I'm going to say that they do because of the huge frame variance. Big, big drops. I mean, we're talking about 40 frames per second um, and I, I don't know if that's acceptable or if that's optimized properly in my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you think that's optimized properly or if you think that they should go ahead and try to fix something or change some things up and hopefully we'll see a patch here soon and hopefully DirectX 12 will really bring us back up and start getting us some good frame rates. I think that the DirectX 12 API implementation for Deus Ex Mankind is going to help out AMD significantly because uh, we've seen that in the past and I think that we're going to see the RX 470s, 480s, and 460s get a huge performance boost in this game but that's yet to be seen so as of launch day these are all the benchmarks for all the cards i personally own and i personally put them into my test bench and tested them all out clean wipes of drivers and everything else i hope you enjoyed and i will see you next tuesday